We attach ourselves to people that make us feel warm and welcomed. It helps build community and it helps our survival. If you have untreated trauma, it affects you on a DNA level. You can pass that onto your kids. So it's well worth getting your trauma sorted out. And I do my best to see that silver lining within every experience. The solution should be simple, but it's not because we're talking about culture change, talking about changing behaviours, we're talking about challenging identities. David, welcome back to the show. Glad to be here. <laughs> for everyone for everyone who um, is just paying attention now because I pressed record, <laughs> that, that came as a quick surprise. We were chatting for about 10 minutes before the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> might as well not waste any time <laughs> might as well not waste any time yeah yeah well hey um yeah so i moved house um a couple of times i think since our last episode but uh it's great to see you've still got the same setting because we started off our first podcast talking about that right. wonderful yeah. didgeridoo well it's funny our uh, 10 minute free conversation yeah. one of the friends who's only has never been to my house um who's just seen me online as far as this place he and his wife walked in and they like looked at the room and they go oh, where do you sit now and i was like and they go oh they're like suddenly it all lined up because they're like oh yeah i mean they they only had experienced this room from zoom so oh yes so. that's very true well that that's yeah. a great um segue as you said back into our previous conversation what one of the things i was thinking about asking you um on the show is you know we we, we hung out before the world was hit with the with the, the black plague <laughs> you know so it's was, just was it that long ago yeah, yeah yeah it's crazy to oh, wow. think that uh that was yeah. probably would have been mid um mid 2019 perhaps or oh, okay. it might have been actually no it could be wrong it might have been uh, just as we were getting hit with the first wave of it. But, um, mm. God, so much has changed, isn't it? It almost feels like it was a time before and a time after. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, I constantly reflect. and I mean, I was already doing a lot, I, I'm probably 50 60% virtual private yeah. sessions, <laughs> not teaching my classes online, but uh, but doing the private work forever phone sessions 25 years ago mm. making their way to you know, what skype and then zoom but um teaching yeah I, you know that really i finally relented when covid hit and said okay you know i'll give it a try yeah. so yeah i mean you know, and a lot of people think, oh, you can have unlimited people. And I'm like, no, no, actually on Zoom, I pr primarily, I mean, typically now my classes are, I make them 25% smaller, you know, yeah. so yeah. there's enough space. And, and for the really shy, quiet people who yeah. aren't going to say hardly a word, you know, to have the time to draw them out a little bit, it, it, you know, it, it, as opposed to if we're all sitting in a room or a space, I, you know, will make it a point to work or have some interactions with every person. But yeah. if you suddenly have, you know, instead of 40 people in a room, you have 80 people online, it's easy to, the people on the, you know, backside of it that are really quiet you know you may not interact with them so enough to really cause them to stay present you know and yes. absorb so i mean that's such a good point it, it's exactly um as you said before you know that there, there are pros and cons you know and sometimes we we have to adapt and you know zoom zoom's good because as you said you can reach a lot of people but then there are some people that kind of get lost and it's no one's fault it's just you know if people aren't naturally more extroverted um they're going to be kind of left behind when you can only do so much in, in front of a screen so yeah i mean and also what i tell people i'm like because they're like you know in people's minds it's like oh you could have hundreds of people i'm like not the way i teach mm. and um it, it's it just as much, if not more work, really energetically, you know, 
keeping everything grounded, really staying present with what you're doing, you know, because I always say as a, as a teacher, if you zone out for one minute or whatever, and then if it's online, they're off making a pizza, you know, doing you know, <laughs> yes. selling the screen. And it's not like I, I don't, sit and like look where's is everybody paying attention you kind of can only you know do what you do but you can feel it you yes. know so it's a different art form no doubt teaching online teaching groups working with groups and you know in that pros and cons i definitely feel like there's i'm still doing it so i feel like there's still more pros because I, I just did a training I don't know, last weekend before last. And, you know, there were people in there from Australia, New Zealand, mm. um, Norway, you know, Sweden, you know, all over that. And some of those people would in the past for sure travel in, but not as many around, you know, Europe and different places. Uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a not only more costly to travel, <clears throat> but a bigger time investment for people. Mm. So, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I, um, so I, um, I work in a, in a clinic and what I've found is that, um, you kind of have maybe like 66.6 reoccurring percent of people that, you know, are, are so grateful to be back in person. Yeah. You kind of have the, you know, the, the last third that have really enjoyed the telehealth program and, and, and like the fact that they can be a little bit more, um, they feel safer perhaps in their own environments. And yeah, I, I would say it's probably 50, 50, honestly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if you even just deal with say a city like LA, I mean, f- forever, you know, people that were on the West side that had an afternoon session booked or early morning, um, you know, they I, routinely would be, can we just move it online, you know, or can we do a phone session just because of, you know, maybe an hour there, it's spending an hour with a per, you know, and then yeah. an hour, hour and a half back, they're like, you know, okay, I'll just do it on the phone or online, you know? So yeah. that's, that's a reality and you're absolutely right. The really, shy, quiet people, it's for them more mm. safe, you know, not well, more, more safe environmentally for them, you know, and the exposure to be in a group, just, you know, they're going to be even quieter in a group. So, yeah. Um, but I, I make it a point in every group, you know, class that, and even that's an art form to go around, have, I mean, oftentimes I'll start off just, hey, to, let's just say your name and where you're located and we'll go, you know, and that can take, if there's 30 people, that can take, you know, 15 minutes. Um, or then if I have them answer a question and say, okay, just ideally one sentence, you know, that'll take a little extra. If you leave it open-ended, and it's kind of like, pro- let's process this with a group of 30 people. It could take an hour, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you have to really set very specific kind of clear boundaries of, of what the parameters are. And it's, I find it's really important to, you know, sometimes even twice a day, I will go all the way around the group. Um, but you have to be able to manage people in that sort of way in a good way humorously light not too grippingly yes <laughs> um, yes so but uh, you know and i haven't i can't say i mean i haven't really done train or you know classes with with other teachers or people because i'm spending enough time online but when i you know have a break i'm like <laughs> get me away from the computer yeah <laughs> maybe know, i'll yeah. squeeze in a couple of interviews here and there but uh but you know, and I don't know what everybody else is doing. I'm just kind of sharing what I've learned. And, and of course, I have a few people teaching for me. And they'll set in, you know, on what when I'm teaching so that they can kind of learn some of the rhythms and 
various things. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I think that's when you work on in group settings um, to have those um, important boundaries. I think someone like myself who's you know, off the charts in extroversion, um, you know, to be like, oh, so let me tell you about the the hour I was born. It was an autumn morning and, you know, I just, I wouldn't know where to stop. So, um, but I have that filter. That's why I have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. But um, it makes sense. I think, you know, give it a sentence here and there. And I think it's good for people because when you kind of make it equitable in those moments, you give someone like me to say, well, I need to think more carefully about the words I use to get my point right. across. And then you have That's the right. shyer, perhaps more introverted people to say, well, this is a chance for me to use my voice because maybe I was from a setting or a background where that was suppressed or, or whatever. Yeah, no, it's, it's hugely important. And for sure, you know, in, in more in-person settings, I, there will be, for, you know, in every group, a few people that would be more extroverted and would have, you know, the capacity to take up a lot of time and space. And yes. that is exactly my core intention is that there's equitable time, you know, and even and some people are going to get more time just because they're willing to stay present and always want to be answering questions. So then at a certain point I will move on past them to and yeah. ask the quiet person who's sitting there like this. And hey, what about you? You know, so I think, you know, like anything, however you can keep the group engaged, it's for the benefit of the group always. Mm. Wow. Definitely. So. Definitely. So, so let, let's, let's talk about your work then, David. So yeah. what were you, um, were you noticing any patterns of pain points coming up in response to, to the pandemic? And were there specific issues that were, yeah, were constantly coming up um, when people were reaching out to you for, for, for healing? Let's see. When you say pain points, you just mean. So if people were, I mean, I know one thing that, that I was noticing was people were feeling a real sense of kind of isolation and loneliness, but then on the other side, yeah. Yeah. Again, this kind of, we've got a pattern here in our own podcast here speaking about extroversion, introversion, people who were more introverted were loving it because this was yeah. a, a time oh. for them to shine. Oh my God. And, and, you know, the adaptation and it's like suddenly every place delivered and even, yes. <laughs> you know, of course, even to a fault, if we look at, I don't know. I mean, I, again, it's, positive and negative with the Amazons, but you can register or, you know, buy something and it can be delivered the same day or same way with groceries or, and, and fortunately, I think a lot of the companies have at least kept that part of it fair and not maybe gouged so much. So then if you look at the time to go do, you know, shop or do something and you're paying eight or 10 bucks for a delivery fee, you're kind of like, well, it's a better use of my time, you know, to be doing something else, even if it's, you know, meditating or relaxing. So, I mean, the world for sure has changed. I would say, you know, patterns and no doubt, you know, I mean, I, I put a meditation out called I'm safe about, I don't know, six months ago to counterbalance all the programming and, mm. you know, tension and anxiety that was, you know, that everybody's been breathing in and watching too much news and whatever, you know, the dangers and the endless things of maybe just the evolution on our planet of what could feel like it's a less safe, more volatile, uh, you know, <clears throat> human experience. And so I wanted to put, it felt strongly because I'd been having to, you know, work with people about, you know, changing some of that subconscious programming and, and be able to have them say, I'm safe. It's safe to be in my body. I can release. And that's what we would do with the breath, raise their vibration and, and clear, you know, some of the, energy that was just stuck, you know, yeah. in the subconscious and even conscious mind and nervous system and the whole body. 
so that's been, yeah, it's really important to help people detox and release, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, so it's, it's such a phenomenal tool, yeah. you know, and I still don't quite understand what's going on, you know, but ever I, I mean, I'm, I'm a, an avid listener to your seven and 13 minute meditations. I could, I could actually repeat back the seven minute meditation to you because I've heard it that much, but it's just, right. for me, it's just so wonderful. It's seven minutes. It's five minutes of breathing. You have the two minute, um, Shavasana at the end of it. And then I might do another meditation after that. But if it's, yeah. it's the fastest way I've found to just, my, it changes my physiology completely you know, That's and true. I don't really understand what, you know, you talk about in that meditation, how, you know, that oxygen surplus kind of neutralizes, neutralizes that part of the brain that is constantly going. Perhaps you could speak mm -hmm. a little bit more about what, what's actually going on in the brain and body. Well, now I'm not a scientist, but certainly even with my friends that are people who study with me, they're anesthesiologists and understand all the oxygen and carbon dioxide and mm -hmm. all the physiological things that go on with the brain. But the way I really, the way that it resonates with me mm. is as even if we're exercising or if we're just taking a good fast walk and creating more blood flow, more breath, more, more intake of breath uh, into the lungs that quickly makes its way into the bloodstream, the oxygen, and pretty much the quickest place it travels to, it seems, is the brain. <clears throat> As the hypothalamus gland, crown chakra, gets activated with that added energy, oxygen, it starts to release endorphins. Um, interferon, neuropeptides. Again, I'm sure there's plenty of scientists and whatever, brain surgeons, people that, but this is the way I've always yeah, yeah. understood it. <clears throat> and, you know, and again, like, more like exercise a bit in the beginning as we're creating that increase in oxygen. And literally, it's pretty much almost to a person about that five minute mark that shift like mm. so people you know a, a common phenomenon that humans are just living by is a mental uh, you know a mental process a mental uh, journey with life yeah. like thinking and it's almost like almost like driven i always say like Webster's dictionary or, you know, the definition our brain puts on everything and, and it's leading us. And that's kind of maybe what I've always said is some of the limitation to talk therapy yep. because the brain knows the story. It's told it a thousand times. It knows all the whatever, but what the key I, I find in the healing is to get in front of the the brain with our emotions and our experience. So if we can slow the brain down, get the feelings to move forward a bit, get the, you know, get the brain just to relax, then all this backed up, for lack of a better description, almost like constipated stuff that's mm. pushed down comes up. And, you know, not only as the hypothalamus gland gets activated, but then the pineal and the thyroid and the thymus and all the other chakras, Douglas glands, they, if we look at the hypothalamus may, mainly maybe being like the, the mainframe computer and all these other little, you know, connected devices, um, it, you know, it, this amazing things happens when, suddenly a person's experience starts being more interesting than their thoughts. Yes. And it, it, like when the thoughts, then when you let go of the thoughts, then you start having, you know, for lack of a better cliche, you know, a spiritual experience with yourself. Mm -hmm. So whatever the emotional pain or stuff from the past that a person may be holding um, or some fear, anxiety that's out in front, that when the brain just kind of relaxes, those 
things kind of merge together and then release. And I, I look at it as we're breathing, you know, and the energy is rising, you know, through the nervous system and the body. That that also is at that moment about that five minute mark where people start to feel tingly. Where, you know, it's this perfect convergence where suddenly they start to feel their body in a different way. And then that's when the thoughts just aren't as as controllingly interesting. And then again, if there's emotions that are stuck, they'll oftentimes just clear, start moving, person will start to feel energy stronger. If they are visual they may start to see something i was working with somebody today she's like, oh my gosh i started seeing as soon as she started vibrating she started seeing almost like a a diamond shape um a, a figure moving in her, the energy of her body and um and i mean right at that time i i definitely had some intuition that there was something in her lineage that she was working out, you know, when she was getting, she was bringing consciousness to. So yes, yeah, it's it's. I mean, nothing scientifically is going to be able to measure what the spiritual experience is. There's no kind of boxing it up and making yeah, definitely. It, it it into something that's so consistently understood because it is creatively unique to each person and that's the magic in it and that's also the magic and that what keeps it fascinating and interesting to me mm. after working with thousands of people it's always unique you know yes. and, and i use the word spirit but again we could say god the universe uh shakti vibrate you know but it's endless what we can call it i i'm not attached and don't feel ownership of the of the the name is important that it, you know any description somebody wants to use is fine with me yeah yeah it, i mean it, it it's so true i mean science science is our um <laughs> i mean the irony of what i'm about to say is i'm actually doing a psychological science degree but it, it's it's one method that we have, you know, before science, yeah. alchemy was the big thing. And, you know, right. we can predate it all with the way back to myths, which I feel still believe hold a lot of reverence. Um, yeah. But who knows what the next science is going to be and if it's going to incorporate some of this stuff that's beyond our comprehension at the moment. You know, it's, I think open mindedness is so important for that. <laughs> Well, so I mentioned the the meditation I'm safe. Well, the one that we just released is called Breathwork Psychedelics, just mm -hmm. because this thing, I mean, it's been present. I've been aware of it for a long time. People using psychedelics and it's even become very mainstream with Western medicine. Maybe not. I mean, some to do with mushrooms, I guess, um, but also ketamine. And I, honestly, you know, I'm okay. I'm, I haven't done everything. I've done ketamine, but I certainly tried mushrooms and, and ayahuasca before and had great experiences and don't really have any judgment of it from my perspective. It's just I've had to help a lot of people get through. Yes. Uh, like they would get caught in what I call like the negative loop and they... Yeah in that enhanced state they couldn't get out and they didn't have maybe the support in a group or whatever to to have that assistance or people you know travel down to the jungle and you know maybe didn't yeah have a lot of um good support with through their experience but you know i think by and large probably most people have good experiences but i've had to help enough people through maybe not so good ones. And then I have plenty of people who are so sensitive and they ask me, I'm like, I don't think you need it. Let's just use the breath. You know, I, because it, with the breath, you're taking each breath and you can augment even your experience by slowing the breath down, stopping the breath. Whereas if you drank a good amount of something, 
and you're in it, you have this leaf, but you may, I find a lot of people aren't empowered from a whole picture, you know, and there's plenty of people who have had life-changing, wonderful experiences using psychedelics, but I find there is some limitation. I, you know, in hu human nature is, we want to get somewhere the fastest way yes. possible and, and shortcuts are always uh, pretty seductive to many. And, but I find in that leap and that gap that people ultimately aren't as empowered in the, in the growth process that where I believe breath, something like breath work, you know, is more empowering is they're actually doing the work, not mm. a substance or a drug, but the, per, you know, the, the, the person, you know, receiving healing is actually doing the work, the bulk of the work themselves. themselves. So. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. I think, uh, you know, there's that old adage about, um, oh, how, how wonderful it would be to, to swim to this beautiful island, you know, um, and, and it's so beautiful to swim there because it's fulfilling and you get a good workout. Then someone comes along and says, well, yeah, but the ferry's only $5. <laughs> but it's like, so you do get there, but the, the right. So much of life is is the story that you can tell yourself yeah. and other people based upon the ups and downs, the adventure right. that I think comes. And I've always thought about breathwork as being, you know, like you're wading out into a into a very wide ocean, but mm. breathwork always gives you a very strong rope tethered to a, a tree so that if you mm. go too far, you can just pull yourself back in. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I have to, in the trainings, have to, because people in the early parts, they may be like, well, I had a really strong experience or, or people will say, well, what do, you, what do you do if people get into, you know, a lot of emotional release or their trauma, you know, and I'm like, that's why we're doing it, you know, yes. that, that's why, that's what we've been doing since the beginning, you know, and recently there's been a number of somatic leaders, authors, teachers coming to me in the last year and they're like, Hey, what we do helps a lot of people, you know, mm. but it doesn't, it doesn't work for us. And so they're asking me to help them go deeper into their body yep. to clear some very specific things that they can't seem to access. Mm. So, you know, we all ultimately, we, most of us will need, we can't do it all usually by ourselves that we, you know, need a little help and support, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, to me it's fast, it, but it can be controlled and calibrated and you can always shift it. And if a person feels like if they're even breathing to listening to a recording, then they, and I find people self-regulate, you know, like, oh, it's really strong. I went through a lot. I was crying so much. I stopped breathing, you know, I mean, you know, slowed down the breathing. And they'll be like, is that okay? I go, yeah, it's totally fine. You know, like cleansing, clearing, releasing. It's always, it's about the journey way more than the destination, you know. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I love about the um, seven minute recording, <laughs> I, I wasn't intending to just market this seven minute, but it's, 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 I really, I really, really enjoyed it. I got a lot from it. Um, at the very end of that meditation, you say, perhaps if you've found more time now, you can go on and do the 13 minute one. Right. I yeah. love that uh, because, you know, I, I find myself when I'm most allured to doing the seven minute one, it's often when I'm in a kind of hyper aroused state, you know, and right. I'm trying to like um, figure my way out of things through thinking, mm. you know, just that never ending right. paradox. It never works. And when I get into no. the body, it's just a five minute pause in the narrative I'm telling myself. And I've realized mm. even just enough to realize that it is a narrative that I'm telling myself and it, but right. it, you're so right. It, it does create time you know, and it's a wonderful example of, I think what you were talking about before of how we're so the way we lead and maneuver ourselves through the world is with this mental phenomenon, you know, yeah. it's enough for us to go, Oh yeah, I was doing that thing again, you know? Right. Well, so I, I say to people all the time, the ones who are getting sick and 
and like there's stress beyond. I'm like, you're chasing time. If mm-hmm. you're chasing time, there's never going to be enough time and it's going to cost you. Like your adrenals are going to burn out. You're, you're, you're just going to be stressed because you're going to always have that tension and not even be breathing. There's not enough time. I'm running late. I, I can't get it done. You know, that sense of overwhelm. And usually, yeah. I'll, I'll tell, tell you, like usually it's not about, because the overwhelming feeling is I can't deal with all of these things. But it's usually one thing that yes. you're putting off and not confronting and I'll be like, what's the one thing you're putting off? And they'll be like, what do you mean? Well, like, <laughs> okay, okay, I got to have this conversation with my whoever and I've been putting it. It's like, have that conversation. And every time it's like, oh, that was it. Now I'm, mm. I'm, you know, I'm relaxed. And so, um, and you know, that's a self-study. I've learned that process if I have anxiety or something's affecting my sleep, or I'm waking up thinking about it, then I, I mean, I don't put it off. I'm like, you know, yeah. I don't care. Deal with it, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then yeah. it, then it time slows down. And that, you know, the other thing with breath work that I think is really important beyond the seven minutes. So seven minutes is the minimal. <laughs> yes. <It's> the day <laughs> you run to the gym and do a couple of chin-ups That's and right. push up and run out. But a little bit, you know, longer, some of the other recordings, you know, when people get to that place where they're really not thinking, vibrating, their spirits moving through them, their time is slowed down. It slows down in such a way. And this is something that I'm just writing about. And I think it's the really magical thing is when you get in that place, when time almost stands still, then you can, I, I, I'm tracking this with people as you can, this is where you can jump through lifetimes. This is where you can go wow. backwards to the lineage or forwards. You know, it's not there every session, but when you get into that magic zone and the spirit is really, you're in that full on connection to your spirit and, you know, if you have awarenesses about some unresolved stuff in past lifetimes or something within the lineage, you can easily just go back there. Mm-hmm. And in one of the classes I teach, the level two, we actually go forward in time, usually two or three, four years. And then I have to set it up right but I found it's a really magical thing when you can help people, you know, relax and move forward to take a look at their life where there's a lot of love and exchange and consciousness in the practice of the work we're teaching. That and, and as they move that forward, you know, and being able to see their life. And I've had hundreds of wow. people say, Oh my God, here's the paper I wrote in the class. And, Here's what I read, you know, three, four, five years down the road. And they're like, everything's come true. Yeah. And so many people. And, and and I think the magic in that is the way it's witnessed, the way people lean into it, their spirit comes in, but then having it witnessed by a group, you know, really yeah. helps add some, some energy to it. So, you know, it's, <laughs> Well, there's a lot of manifestation models out there. This isn't really so, I mean, it is some part of a manifestation, I guess we could say, but really it's more of, you know, taking what we're working on right now and utilizing it and then asking your spirit just to show you, you know, a, a like a nice, easy waking up morning what your life smell like, feel like, taste like, and that some of the real depth of power in it is using the senses. Mm-hmm. Smell, you know, an ocean breeze or coffee <laughs> in the background. I hear, a, feel a, a little baby or, you know, heartbeat beside me. and You know, these things that people, you know, are wanting, but to take it beyond once into 
the senses actually experiencing yeah. it creates some pretty nice magic, I guess we could call it. Well, it becomes more of a, a visceral, like real thing, isn't it? Like you can really yeah. start to feel, um, you know, like a, a perfect day or, or, or a vision, mm -hmm. you know, that's just so mm -hmm. wonderful. And I think, you know, one of the powers of breath work is that um, to just detach yourself from the story that's guiding your life for, for, for long enough. And obviously, as you said, yeah. <laughs> probably requires a bit more than five to seven minutes. But right. when you really break free from this idea of who you feel that you've needed to be for so long, um, you, you, you fall into this place that I feel like is simultaneously exciting and terrifying because it's, well, now you're a no one. So you could be anything. And the fear yeah. is, well, now I'm who the hell am I? But it's also, who do you want to be? And that's why I think the, the visualization can come in so handy because it's like, well, I don't have to be this people pleaser, overly agreeable, I don't know, A, B, and C, depending on my upbringing or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, it's claiming, you know, it's claiming. So we, I set it up in a way of like, because really with the healing book, you know, a lot of it's about self-love. And to me, that's the starting point. And, and even with deep healing with people, getting them to understand through the use of the breath, working with their energy, and then, you know, teaching people when they start to really feel the presence of their spirit as vibration, then to start to imprint, this is self-love. You've been doing the breathing for seven minutes, 14 minutes. <laughs> you've been doing the work. Now you can claim that, you know, mm -hmm. this is a representation of me loving myself. And the whole game changes when a human being realizes that they can love themselves and that the whole external world, even our intimate relationships change dramatically when we're in a place of self-love because then we're not needy. And then that person out there is not dictating, you know, our own experience that they're actually freed up to be who they are, you know, and whatever we share is some, you know, agreed upon almost like the icing on the cake, you know? Yeah. Um, so mm. there's a lot to it. You know, there's so much, there's probably nothing new in the spiritual world really being created. It's more of regurgitated in, you know, a language and an understanding of what people can hear right now. You know? That's a really good point. I think, um, yeah, that's a, that's a, actually that would be a great um, conversation to have. Do you feel that, I mean, I, I even I did a little bit before, tell me about the science, David, <laughs> what do you, <laughs> When, when, when new people are coming to you and asking um, about this modality, is there a language that you feel has worked better or based upon our, our, our well, age at the moment? Or? I mean, probably the lucky thing, and as my wife puts me in my place, <laughs> um, like, wow, you should be successful. You've been doing it forever. People, you know, hopefully they would know about you. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah you're right. Um, but the, <laughs> yes, you know, the good, the good, th yeah, the good thing is if you've been doing something a while and, and I mean, the key is there, there's no secret. The key is if, you know, there's energy and what I call spirit moving around the work you're doing, word of mouth is going to, you don't have to promote, you don't yeah, have to sell. Yeah. It's that the, this person's going to tell their five family members and people they love and want to help. They're going to, and it's just going to keep spreading that mm -hmm. way. And so for me, you know, answering your question, usually I just ask the person, you know, is there something I can help you with? Is there something specific we, you, you want to focus on today? And usually it's like, <laughs> they'll be like, Oh yeah. How long do we have? You know, or, can I bring out my list? You know, so <laughs> they've already formulated something in their mind based on however they've found me, which rarely is it anything to do with something posted on social media or whatever, because it's always been word of mouth. And, um, um, 
you know, when, and so the sales, all that's already handled because of people sharing mm -hmm. their own experience. So I, I'm going to just ease right into it with what can I help you with? Is there anything, you know, in particular that, that we need to focus on? And then they're going to share with me and tell me what they believe I need to know. Mm -hmm. And they're telling me what I believe I need to know, even before they got here, my intuition, usually I say they can only show up about five minutes ahead of time energetically, but I'm going to have intuition starting to, you know, percolate as soon as they come in the door. A funny thing is people, they're talking about, you know, what do you do when people get emotional? I'm like half the time, even the men, when they knock, come in the door, they're like starting to, tear up or something <laughs> you know, what's going on <laughs> what, yeah what I, I i don't usually any so you know the emotions start to move you know people really just want to be seen and heard yep. and felt without judgment and and with that acceptance generally again what people are carrying just mm -hmm. starts to release and then you know after we talk for 15 20 minutes, then I'm going to, you know, move them. Uh, and it's the same process online. Then be like shift into, okay, I think we're ready to do the breath, the meditation, which they already know about. And many people have already been practicing on a lot of the recordings on Spotify. So, you know, I don't really have to show many people how to do the breath, but I still go ahead just to make sure they kind of have the rhythm down. Um, and again, whether it's in, if it's in person, maybe I can do if need to be a little bit of interaction with the body, you know, I make uh, some essential oils for the chakras, um, blends of oils. So that would be the thing that might be a little different than online, even sure. though people that have worked with me a lot of times or have the oils and they will have applied them and kind of set their space up. So, so really people's their own intention for healing kind of sets the tone. Mm. And I work into that, um, you know, doing my best to help them feel safe, seen, heard, felt, and then I trust the universe to hold the agenda for the person's healing, you know, mm -hmm. or release or shift or opening. Um, and pretty much, you know, something always happens. You know? Yeah. It's, you know? it's amazing when people, uh, you know, even just make the financial commitment, you know, it doesn't have to be financial, mm -hmm. but in this day, it usually mm -hmm. is just to say, yes, I'm, I'm going to go and do a yeah. session or something. And as you said, you know, they open the door and straight away they're in a container of being held. So it just, I mean, I, I remember a fellow, this has got nothing to do with, with how I work at all. I wish I could take some credit, but I cannot take any of this credit. And he came into the, to the clinic and I said, Hey mate, um, so how can I help or something like that? And he just bawled his eyes out, but it just yeah. speaks to what you were saying of, um, you know, you finally step up and I've noticed it with my own, um, mm -hmm. work in the past where I've, you know, taken on a, a practice or spoken to a counselor or whatever. And, um, I immediately feel, um, like I can let go of some armor or defense mechanisms or right. even when you're getting a haircut, <laughs> you know, you're sitting in the chair and someone's doing something for you. You're like, Oh, this feels pretty nice. I can <laughs> kick back a little bit, you know, <laughs> yeah. not that I need a haircut right now. Yeah, exactly. Well, you get the, the, yours is, uh, probably you get to handle that yourself. I guess. That's right. That's but, exactly right. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, and if you think about it, you know, with your parents or their parents, you know, the views of getting help, seeking out healing or even counseling, you know, has changed so much mm, since, mm. you know, the prior generations. Um, and, and, you know, it's the, the younger people. I mean, I routinely am working with sometimes 12 year olds, 14 year olds who are, you know, going through stuff that won't be, and then uh, the bulk of my work 
is one or two sessions and then people go, you know, they have their therapist, they have other, their astrologer, whatever they, yeah. you know, but, and then they just come in when we need to deal with something, whether that's six months later, a year later, five years later. I mean, I saw somebody recently I had seen in like 20 years. Oh, wow. Wow. That's so cool. What was that like? It was, I remembered, I mean, I have a, most of the time, a pretty good memory. So I remembered and they were like totally freaked out. What do you mean? You remember that? What? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and I saw a guy also recently that I'd seen like 12 years ago who had cancer and he got back in touch with me and said, and I only saw him one session and he Anyway, he got back in touch with me and said, mm. hey, I'm ready to, I don't know, do you remember me? I, I'm still alive. And wow. um, and he's like, now, now I'm coming in to work on relationship that, you know, we healed the cancer. I did wow. in the breathing this, what I call the entity release, which is also a, a recording on Spotify. We did that with him. He had testicular cancer. And, and when we got into it, literally the, experience and thing that happened to him when he was younger just came out and he he's like he felt it and literally I think he was about midway through his chemo when he came to see me he's like it changed things so dramatically which is kind of unheard wow. of they even stopped his chemo they didn't go the full six i think they stopped it at five cycles instead of six and he's like i'm fine you know um, and he's like, I felt, you know, whatever that thought form energy was totally left my body. And he's like, I've been the same ever since, but he's like, it took me a while to trust that I was ready for a relationship and, and yeah. I got into one, but now I need help how to navigate it. So, you know, those are, amazing. those are stories that are heartwarming to me because it, you know, his journey of life he's living, you know, and he's chewing it up pretty good. And he's like, Hey, that was, that was a blip that, you know, happened. And I'm grateful every day I got through that. And, you know, it's not like he, that I'm claiming that I had anything to do with his healing. I just got to be part of it, you know, well, um, I but can claim, I'll claim that for you. <laughs> what well, was fun for me <laughs> his humor and how he came back about this. I got myself into this thing now with relationship and I really, you know, I really need like some guidance about some choices here, you know? So yeah. it was, there was a lot of honest vulnerability in it. And he, you know, I mean, that's the amazing thing about doing healing work like this. You know, I may only see a person a few, two or three times ever, but still have some impact, you know, on their life, you know, so I mean, it's, it's just, you know, there's only so much that, um, talk therapy can, can do before, you know, and that's something that someone that does it, um, yeah. I just feel like they work so well together. I often say this to Siobhan, like when there's, yeah. there's a real major, uh, emotional shift that needs to happen we could talk to someone till the cows come home, but it's not going to do anything. But then right. when something comes up and people need help narrativizing and integrating right. it, that's when I find talk right. therapy can really be beneficial. Yeah. You know, it's really important, you know, and it's, I like it when, you know, I like it when a, people have a team and they have a really great therapist and they bounce, they have that dynamic where they can bounce everything off them and there's a, a quite a lot of therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists that send me, you know, yep. a lot of their clients to say, you got to go to him for this, you know, yep. help, you got to get this, you know, opened up and moving and, um, you know, but I'm not, uh, and I don't, you know, for me, I'm, I'm fine. They do the, you know, talk therapy and, and we talk and we'll, you know, I'll mirror things or whatever, but I don't really get into some heavy historical, you know, psychoanalysis or anything, because yep. yep. I know they got that covered. And honestly, you know, 
people know that, but then they mm-hmm. still need help in that, you know, maybe even putting context of what happened in the healing session to the application moving forward with the relationships or whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, you know, everybody I think is important in the process. I like it when people say I've been doing, I've done 20 years of therapy. I'm like, great. That shows a good commitment. Now we'll just see if there's some other layers or with a lot of people, it's just, that residue and with the deepest traumas and sexual abuse, you know, stuff. It's like they may have all every understanding about what happened, but they can't clear the almost like the tap root or just some of that residue mm. on the, and that's where we have to take the spirit and, and use that to cleanse things on that deepest level, you know, yeah. and a lot of times on that deepest <clears throat> emotional thread too. Mm. So. Yeah, it's so, it's so true. And, you know, I mean, it, it's so important to be selfish uh, um, with, with your, your, your personal development. And, you know, uh, some people just doing somatic stuff is enough and that's who they are. And they, right. they, can't be fuck talking. It's not, they don't want to do it, you know, and cause they don't want, it's not who they are, you know? And that's, yeah. that's amazing. Other people spending an hour a day knitting is <laughs> enough. I don't know, yeah. gardening, whatever, you know? Right. <clears throat> I, to, to me, a content, happy person, you know, who's made peace or doesn't keep, you know, revisiting or isn't troubled by something. I'm like, don't mess with, you know, don't mess with what's good and what's mm. working. I mean, I don't, and I say to friends, it's like, okay, it's enough processing. You guys, you know, some couples, I'm like, you guys live, go have some <laughs> fun, you know, can't you, you keep processing and picking it apart that even can get boring, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's a combination when we need to work on stuff do the work, get in there, you know, and I, honestly, you know, I'm a biggest believer that creative expression, pushing people creatively, yeah. you know, all else fails, just go to gratitude and yes. use that as a practice. And, and, but I, but I, I, I know I have a big passion for nudging and encouraging artists and creative people um but I, otherwise i wouldn't have still be you know in los angeles working with a lot of entertainment people it's fascinating for me i like you know I, i'm always passionate about you know artists that have a side that's so been so traumatized but mm. they've learned to live in this almost fantasy creative place that, you know, oftentimes we have to help them in that bridging of that, you know, enough, keeping enough energy flowing between the two that they stay grounded. But I get to see, you know, some of the most creative people and understand and, you know, and, and, and a lot of times even keep them going straight down the path. Mm to say, just get back to finishing your album or finish your movie script or, or just stay on that. And they're like, what do you mean? I've got this divorce. I'm like, okay, divorce. It'll, if you, if you go completely sideways with that, you're and you stay not connected to your creative expression, you'll probably go deeper into the rut. So yes getting them back, creating a lot of times is all the fix that highly creative people need. You know, that's their therapy. That's their, their, you know, healing. Mm. So if they're not, it's like the football team, you know, or I don't know over there, I guess, you know, but you know, in America, the, the American football, yes, it's like, yes. it's, you know, they, the colleges, they would have usually in the season one weekend, they didn't play a game as half the team would be getting rested, throwing the furniture out of the, the dorm room windows because they weren't 
using that energy up. It was using them, you know, even though they yes. would still practice, they, they had too much, you know, they weren't using it. So mm. it would create highly creative people, they got to be creating, you know, using it. Otherwise, it turns on them, you know. Yes, so. yes. That it's uh, that is that's kind of like my favorite person to work with. I love yeah. people that are just they see the world in ways that we'll never be able to see, you know, and they live on the border of um, the, yeah. the, the the known and the unknown, and you know, and yeah. it's um, the yeah that that is their vessel, their creative expression is that it's because they they fall through the cracks of what society can offer, you know, being a lawyer right. or a doctor isn't enough, and they can turn our world into rejuvenate it with their ideas. But yeah. um, do, do you find that with those sorts of people? being so open um that the, the discipline and the pursuit of finishing their creative thing is the hard part or i mean yeah well there's plenty that you know <clears throat> lack of confidence and you know yes. the ones who maybe the dark <clears throat> or some addictions that they you know i mean one guy i can think of had huge it, it was became huge but had heavy issues with his mom doubted his talent so much that he would just like torture himself, mm. <clears throat> but was a super talented writer. Mm. And, you know, like he remembers and he would describe when his first like inspiration came through, and, you know, he sold a movie script for three quarters of a million dollars when he was fresh out of college, you know, wow. and then, you know, a lot of success, writing movie scripts and, but was torture always torturing because he doubted his talent. Mm -hmm. And I was always be like, hey, what would happen, you know, if you didn't persecute yourself so much and grew to trust it. And, but the fear was that his talent was his suffering. And I was like, maybe, I don't know if that's accurate. Yes. You know, you know, you're, if you keep, eventually you're going to probably, well, torture yourself to death, you know, in a way, mm. you know, smoking cigarettes, drinking gallons of coffee, doubting, 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 and then plah, vomiting it out. And still there would be some magic there. And so we worked pretty hard. He it was a, an amazing manifester if he just got out of his own way, mm. you know, so that, Extreme talent also can come with a lot of extremes, you know, mm. and almost like walking a tightrope of sanity, you know, but the, yep. a yep. lot of that <clears throat> gift is in that place that's uh, not grounded in <laughs> normal reality, you know. Yeah. So it's, that's, you know, again, and those super talented people, yeah, it is fascinating. I like, you know, seeing their whole life and what, yeah. you know, understanding it just in a few minutes, you can yes. see it, you can hear it for the mu artists, the music, your musicians, when I'm working with them, I'll hear me, I'll hear their soundtrack. If they're a writer, I'll, I'll kind of be led into the passion about their storytelling. Mm. If they're a, a filmmaker or a you know photographer for them i mean my, literally my third eye will will work you know be different in the session because i'll see more so mm. you know we can mm. that's some of the the byproduct of of you know being able to work with people but also being able to see it from their perspective too yes yeah, and and you you bring up such a good point about the um I mean there's this 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 cliche idea of the the, the tortured artist you right. know and I think maybe a lot of people come into um, artistry and creativity to alchemize that pain but then after a while that it becomes very existential for them because they start wondering who they'd be without their pain and I think beyond that yeah. maybe if you're speaking to this but it's about well, can't you just be creative without needing this pain to define you? Right. Yeah. No, I, I was talking with the singer actually today and 
and she's not really doing her music, but I could tell when she was breathing, there was so much more that wanted to be coming out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we talked about it and, and I was like, you know, the magic for most many performers, they're gonna, a lot of people have stage fright or don't or doubt, but it's, and they start to sing. And then that, that transmutation, that what feels like anxiety or terror turns into their spirit coming mm. through because they do it because they choose to do it, you know, versus, you know, not doing it. So, you know, I've known many performers. So we've had to work with many that the day before they start a movie or recording their album, they they lose their voice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, it's okay. <clears throat> Your voice is going to come back. You just got to trust. This is a project you're meant to do. And, and, you know, there's something in there and then, as far as you want to go with some people, sometimes there is <clears throat> certainly for maybe a bit more on the female side, you know, past lifetime trauma yep. when they were fully expressed around the throat, you know, mm. you know, using the throat, you know, so, um, so have had to help certainly quite a lot of female writers in Hollywood that it was safe for them to, actually speak up in meetings and be heard yep. in, a, in a meeting full of men, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. Wow. Well, David, uh, my friend, yeah. I could, uh, I could talk to you for yeah. hours. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Um, yeah. I want to be um, conscious of your time and I appreciate it as always. Um, yeah. In terms of what's on the horizon for you, just quickly, you mentioned that you, um, you put out a, is it, is it a bunch of meditation recordings for, is it psychedelic integration or what is it specifically? Oh, uh, well, so actually a lot of times during the end of the year holidays, I have some, you know, friends who uh, do music and they'll each year bug me enough to work. So uh, to let's record. So last Christmas holidays, uh, we recorded uh, four, uh, yeah, meditation. So we've released two of them. The, the I'm safe, I think came out yes. say in March and then breathwork psychedelics, which is, is a bit of a play on, you know, it, even the cover of the psychedelic maybe movement in the sixties or seventies Cool. in my own tongue in cheek way. But really the passion is about, um, that the breath can take you into just this deep of an experience. Definitely. And then probably in the fall, we have one because I help so many people around pregnancy. So it's mm. going to be a uh, pregnancy and fertility, um, a, a recording that also will have application yeah. with people around their creativity. Um, and then I forgot the fourth one, I believe it's like deeper clearing, of abuse energies out of the physical body. Mm. So, wow, well, um, that's awesome. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd love to, um, um, yeah, I'll have to listen to those. And, um, <laughs> if I've learned anything from today, I'll probably have to do a little bit more than the five minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, to get to the, the breath work to the psychedelic place, there is, there's a few things I'm having people do a little, bit more passionately with the breath and bringing the breath up through the heart in a slightly different way that helps also, um, you know, open, uh, the upper chakras. So, yeah. Yes. Um, it's important. It, it, I hear, I'm hearing yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you're, so you work in, um, LA at the moment for people who want to find you. Are you doing stuff still down in New Mexico? Yeah. So in yep. New Mexico, I do, my usually the trainings there we're looking at maybe gearing back up with retreats it's like you know just when you think things are going to get easier I know. you know some new thing but you know so I'm, I'm i mean knock on wood in any of the group work we've done you know we haven't had any complications with COVID or anybody getting anything before or, or during or after, let's put it that way. 
Um, so, but usually we'll just at least nowadays be at the place that we're bringing a group of people together that, you know, the day before they just do a rapid test and, you yeah. know, um, again, knock on wood, but we've been very fortunate, you know, groups are smaller. We're doing everything in a conscious way with even filtering and keeping the place filled in the air and keeping the place extra clean. And, you know, I like to think that one day soon we'll get over the hump of, uh, or get the herd immunity so good that, you know, we're on to whatever, whatever else is coming down the pike. But, you know, (laughs) so, but I'm, I'm hoping to, you know, at least next year get back to retreats two are are like the application of what people learn in the trainings and retreats or like a, a little bit more of a community based uh application of the healing work you know that has themes you know to them so oh that's awesome great well yeah if people that want to stay um following that um is there a place that people can find you yeah just on my website i don't you know you tell people they're like I signed up for your newsletter and I'm like, yeah, sorry, I haven't been doing newsletters for about the last <laughs> 10 years, but, yeah. Um, what newsletter? but yeah, yeah. What newsletter I do have that on my website that they can yep. sign up for it. I just don't, but usually just through the events page, they just look on there and see what's coming up. And, cool. um, you know, uh, if they want to, lean in. I'm not really doing much online except for the trainings. So yep. a little bit, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, mate, it's always such a pleasure to, to chat with you and ho- hopefully next time we, we hang out, uh, there won't be another pandemic. <laughs> hopefully we'll be over the hump, as you said. Uh, hopefully we'll be yeah on over that horizon. So. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It'd be good. I mean, maybe even next time we can hang out, um, um, see if I can get myself over to, to the US and catch up for a coffee in person or something. It'd be cool. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. My wife keeps nudging because she's like, we're, we still have a, a honeymoon thing that was years ago that we put off and our daughter came in the mix, <clears throat> but that's going to Bali. And then she um, wanted to come back through Australia to Byron Bay. Oh, or, beautiful. Uh, and, and there's some people down there and I have some friends down there too, but I'm sure once we get over to that, part of the world we'd probably stick around and visit a few places and areas so. yeah that that whole area is beautiful i got a lot of family that grew up in in byron bay and um yeah even the ballina area tweed heads it's be- it's just beautiful up there it's freezing yeah. down here in melbourne <laughs> oh no, yes, <laughs> but, uh, it's yes. very cold at the moment so uh wow. yeah so that sounds pretty Winter good time, I guess. yes by the time yep <laughs> hot over here now so yeah. well good but yeah no i look forward to uh, our in-person hug and meeting mm. and, you know tell siobhan i said hi Yes, yes. There was a couple of barks before, but she's just um, come back with uh, some of the dogs, I think. So I heard. Um, I yeah, heard. I'm sure yeah. you did. I thought, yeah, I was going to put a disclaimer on the podcast and be a couple of dogs here at the moment, guys. So the barking yes. was uh, meant to be. But yeah, yeah, David, always such a pleasure, mate. Thank you so much, oh. and we'll uh, we'll talk soon. Okay, Tom. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye.